Hey y'all, it's Andrew with Free Tours by Foot New Orleans, and today I'm here to help you make a good start to your trip by successfully getting into town from the airport. I'm gonna cover your choices, what each one is gonna cost you in money and time, assuming that you're visiting during a regular time of the year. If you're gonna be here during Mardi Gras, assume things will take at least twice as long. All this information is up to date as of November 2021, and we also have a blog post linked in the description of this video where you can find all of this in writing with links. When I say the airport, I mean Louis Armstrong International Airport. It's a pretty new building, just opened in 2019, and it's the only big one in the metro area, so pretty much all air travelers arrive there. And after landing, pretty much every air traveler then takes about the same trip by road to get into town. The airport's located in a suburb called Kenner, so unless you're staying in the suburbs, you'll be taking a trip of about 15 miles to reach the French Quarter, or the business district where most visitors stay. That ride can take anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic. As you go, you can get a head start on sightseeing. The highway takes you past a cluster of above ground cemeteries, then the signature green roofs of Xavier University, and right past the most distinctive piece of the New Orleans skyline, the Superdome. First, a bit of trivia. The three letter code for our airport is MSY, but its full name is Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport, which doesn't seem to relate to that code at all but it only got named for Louis Armstrong in 2001. The MSY code goes back to its original name. When it was first established as an airfield for the US Army during World War II, it was named Moisson Field after a famous aviator who died in a flying accident nearby. The commercial airport that replaced that got called Moisson Stockyards, MSY. You can see why we rebranded it. Anyway, your first and cheapest option is public transit. Two buses stop at the airport, and you'll find both of them outside the third level by the ticket counters. The signs and the buses will either be labeled 202 or E1. The 202 is part of the New Orleans RTA, the same public transit system that operates local streetcars and the bus system in the city proper. A standard adult fare is $1.25, and you can pay an extra 25 cents to transfer to another RTA vehicle. And the 202 gets on the highway and goes straight downtown, stopping at the bus and train station at the edge of the business district, and then again, just outside the French Quarter. Like any drive-in, it can take 20 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic. Your other option, the E1, is run by JET, the public transit system for Jefferson Parish, the suburban area where the airport is located. Its standard adult fare is $2, and it also has a stop just outside the French Quarter, but it avoids the highway and makes a few stops on the way, so an hour is the minimum. But the E1 rolls more often and for longer hours than the 202, so it just depends on when you're making the trip. You can find schedules linked from our blog post. Both buses accept cash on board and do not offer change. And if you're riding RTA, you can also get tickets in advance using the New Orleans RTA app. Your next option is to take a cab into town. Those won't necessarily make the trip any faster than the bus, but there's something to be said for their constant availability, their capacity for luggage, and curbside drop-off. When you step out from baggage claim, look for the numbers above the doors. The cab pickup is just outside door number seven. There's a fixed rate of $36, plus whatever you decide to tip, to get from the airport to the French Quarter or Business District, or $15 per person if there are three or more passengers. Ride shares also pick up from just outside baggage claim. When you exit, you'll see a few lanes of traffic, then another curb on the opposite side. Lyft and Uber both pick up along that second curb. Lyft from the part corresponding to doors seven through nine, and Uber from the part near doors nine through 11. Hail either one once you get your bags, and you'll get a code that'll help match you with your driver. Rates on rideshares start around $40 and go up depending on demand, so cabs are generally the more affordable option, unless you're around during low traffic hours and you've got three or more people. And if it looks like a daunting wait for all of these and it feels worth paying extra to save time, there are also some private car services in town that you can book with, detailed on our blog post. You can also spot an airport shuttle service outside baggage claim. It picks up around doors three and four, and you'll know it by its big vehicles that say airport shuttle down the side. You can book with them in advance, or they have a ticket office near baggage claim. 
They offer stops at lots of hotels, cruise ship terminals, and some university and corporate buildings too. Because it's got more people to drop off, the airport shuttle is usually slower than a cab or rideshare by a little or by a lot, depending on how many places it has to drop people off. But if you're traveling alone, their $24 one-way ticket is the best rate you can get apart from the bus. And if you book both ways with them, it's a total of $44. Your last option is rental cars. MSY's rental car center is off-site. From baggage claim, walk straight ahead toward long-term parking, and you'll find the stop for the shuttle to the rental car center. It's a 15 or 20 minute ride, but the shuttle comes every five minutes, and both it and the rental car center run 24 seven. Depending on where you're staying, what you'll be doing, and the time of year, renting a car can be a good or an awful idea. Attractions like swamp tours and plantation houses are outside the city, and shuttle transport can end up costing more than a rental car. But if you're staying in the French Quarter or Business District, parking easily makes a rental car the costly option, in terms of both money and time. Also, streets all over town are narrow and one-way and not at all free of potholes, so you may save yourself stress by leaving the driving to the pros. And there are rental car locations in the downtown area too, so if you're considering a day trip out of town, renting for the day you need it and doing without the rest of the time may be the best balance. And no matter how confident you feel, it's best not to try to drive around Mardi Gras. Y'all, for a recap of any of this or links to the various providers, or to double check that you're up to date, check out that blog post linked in the video description. Down there, you'll also see a link to our in-person guided tours, something to peruse while you're on the ride into town, if you want to get insight from fellow travelers and some locals, check out our Facebook group, link down there too. And you can find links to tip your guide. We've also got lots of other travel tips and online walking tours right here on our YouTube channel. Take a look and see what catches your eye. Subscribe to stay in the loop. Thanks y'all, see you next time.